Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Noma Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be installing Stable Diffusion, which is AI generative art. So let's get started. So you guys probably been hearing about this a lot recently, which is AI generative art. Basically, you could input some prompt into a computer and it will spit out the image that you are trying to look for. So a picture of a dog, a flying pig, a cow, something like that. It will actually generate whatever you're looking for. There are many providers that actually do this right now, which is like Mid Journey or Dolly 2 and a few others. But most notably, if you want to be able to run your own open source version, we'll be using Stable Diffusion. Now, Stable Diffusion has been around for a while. Actually, I think a lot of these other companies use Stable Diffusion as a base. So we're just grabbing it from the source. Anyway, we're going to hop over to the computer right now and I'm going to show you how easy it is to install. Anything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. So this way you can just grab whatever you need. First thing we need is something called Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI. Now we're going to grab that Git. I'm just going to copy it for now. But if you scroll down, it'll actually go through all the instructions on how it runs, how it works, how to install it, everything you need in the description down below. So if you get a chance, go through it. Also, if you're stuck at a problem, be sure to check out the issue board. Sometimes it's right, probably already resolved or you have to do something else. But yeah, the issue board will always be uh, able to help you with most of the problems that you're running through. This also does work with Linux and Windows. I'm gonna be installing it on Linux. Now, first, we're gonna pop open a terminal because we're gonna to need to grab some files. And you have to install it on your home folder. So if I do PWD, you see how it says slash home slash done. It can't be like in my documents or in desktop or in download folder. It has to be specifically in home slash done. So here I'm gonna do git clone and grab that link that we just copied over, which is the automatic 11.11 stable diffusion.web. After you grab this, it's just a matter of running it. It's super easy. So the folder has to be also named the same way, stable diffusion dash web UI. Like don't change the name of that either. It kind of messes with the whole installation process. Now, once I grab that, you, if you're in Windows, you just run the batch file. If you're in Mac, you run the Mac file. We're in Linux, so we're gonna run the SH. Now there's a few things you could do with this. For the first time you're running it, I would just say run it standard like this so it could install all the prerequisites and all the python libraries everything that you need but later in the future you might want to add listen this opens it up so you can actually hit the website from another computer for or another source instead of hosting it locally now i also like to do theme dark just in case if the computer is in light mode and i like the dark theme but that's really up to you so for now we're just going to run it locally we're going to delete all those prompts and hit web ui Dot sh. It's gonna know to install everything. Like give this about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, once you are all done, you'll be presented with this prompt. Basically it says, create a public link, share equals true, etc., etc. That means it already loaded. So you got the URL that you need to jump into. Now, as far as the requirements go, you do need a GPU. Do not trust this. I mean, you could run this on a CPU, but it's extremely slow. I mean, to the point where it's not even worth it. A image that you could generate on a GPU with a 1070 takes about say 12 to 15 seconds, while on the CPU would take upwards of 10 minutes for the same exact picture. So it's like, just try to get a GPU working on this. It's much better. Now, minimum requirements for a GPU, I would say about six gigabytes or up. Uh, you could get it started with four gigabyte graphic card, but to generate any type of art, it's gonna run out of memory. So. Yeah, basically try to get anything six gigs of memories or up. And if you want to do high resolution images, you're going to need something of 12, 20, 24 gigs of VRAM. It's all about video memory at this point from generating what type of art you need. So to get into the web UI, obviously we have this link and we're sharing it only local to this machine. So nobody else can hit it. And there's a reason for this now. If you're trying to install extensions or plugins, you need to have the setting so you only could reach it from the computer that you're running it from. This way you can install all the stuff. So I'm gonna run 127.0.0.1.7860. Now, if you are running um, text generation web UI, which is from my previous video for AI, this port might be 7861 instead of 7860. So just keep that in mind. All right, so here we have the default installation. Actually, this is a little bit more than the default because I added some stuff to it, which I'll explain a little bit later, but we'll kind of browse through this real quick. 
Now, first, if you want to be able to generate any type of images, you could give it a prompt. So to start off, I'm going to say photo of a dog, okay? And I'm going to hit generate. As it's generating, I'm going to go through some of the steps that we have. We have the positive prompts, which is the prompt that we want to give it, say like a photo of a dog. Now, if you if there are something that is missing or something that is deformed, you could actually put it in the negative prompt on what you don't want. So sometimes it might generate the art and it has three eyes. So in the negative prompt, you would put something with deformed eyes or three eyes. This way it will eliminate the generation of multiple eyeballs. So here we have the dog and he looks really cute. This is all AI generative and you get this default 1.5 model as soon as you install it. So this is what you actually get and it's, it's really, really nice. Now going down the steps, like I was saying, you have the photo of a dog, which is the prompt that you're gonna give, then negative prompts, which is very important. This is probably something you should get into so you don't generate all the deformed stuff. Uh, you have the sampling method, gives you different results for different things. Uh, if you want like more realistic look, you will probably use DPM plus plus 2M Keras. There's just, there's more about it. If you Google on each one of these, they all do a different thing. Rule of thumb is to stick on this one, Eluler A. I don't know how to really say that, but yeah, that's the rule of thumb a lot of people stay on, but you can change it around and use other stuff if you want. Uh, sampling step is how many strokes you want the AI to use. So example, uh, it all starts off with noise, like this picture right over here. And then every sampling step, it actually does like a stroke into that noise to slowly generate the image that you want. So if you are putting in a photo of a dog, it is gonna start drawing a picture of a dog in this noise and after 20 steps, it's gonna start looking like what we see right here. The more steps, the more detailed it's gonna be, but sometimes it could be over-generated. So you kinda need to find the good spot. 20 is a good rule of thumb to start off with, especially on the resolution that we're in. So yeah, start with 20. If you have a GPU that could do a lot more because the more steps, it's gonna take longer. Uh, you could go up to 40, 50, 100. You could go crazy with this. 100 steps could be really detailed in what you're trying to do versus 20. Going down, you have your width and your height. This is where VRAM is very important. 512 by 512 is the limit of most GPUs that are six gigs of RAM. And here I explain, look, uh, if I go over to, let me open up a new tab. And if I go to watch NVIDIA SMI, which is gonna watch my GPU, I'm gonna see that it is using already two gigs of RAM because the library is loaded into there. And if I was to generate the art, which I'll do in a little bit, you're gonna see this go up. And the higher the resolution, the more RAM it's gonna need. And 512 by 512 really is like the limit of six gigs. I could go a little bit higher because I got eight gigs of VRAM, but not too bad. I can't do 1080 photos because it's just too big. It takes about 14, 15 gigs of VRAM just to do a 1080 photo. Now, batch count is also important because you could actually have it generate this same prompt how many times. So batch count one, which is only one photo. If you do five, it's gonna give you five photos of that same prompt. CFG scale is how much you want it to look like the the prompt that you are talking. So example, if you have a prompt saying Tom Cruise, uh, I want a photo of Tom Cruise. If you have a CGF scale of one to three, it's gonna look nowhere near like Tom Cruise. Uh, if you have a CGF scale of seven to like 10, it's gonna look more and more like him. And then the higher it goes, it's even more detailed. But sometimes it could be overcorrected or overdrawn. So seven is really a good number to start off with. And if you start to see the model that you are trying to draw, say like Tom Cruise, starting not to look like the way you want, you could increase that scale by a little just to get more details out of it. Now keep in mind, this only works if your model knows who Tom Cruise is. So if I was to put my name, Don from Nova Spirit, it's not gonna know who I am. This scale could go all over the place. It's still not gonna know how to generate my face because it doesn't know who I am, which will also come in a later video because I am actually gonna train this later on in the future. So I'm gonna show you guys how to train your face as a model and then use AI to generate your own face into this stuff. Now seed, we just keep it usually at random. But if you do like this particular photo and this style and this everything that this looks, it does spit out the seed number for you, which is this right here, oh, right here, three, one, two. So if you wanted to recreate this picture in this type of style with this type of lighting and everything, you could just replace that with this seed number and it'll generate more photos of this type of style. We're just gonna leave that blank. And then scripts, there's a few scripts that you could use over here. Uh, right now, we're not gonna touch that, but if we were to use it, we would probably use XYplot. But yeah, 
let's play around with this a little bit more. Now we have a photo of a dog. And if we wanted to generate something like photo of a dog laying down and I hit generate, it's going to know that, well, it should generate a dog laying down. Now this is a little deformed. It's still very, very, very cute, but you can see the ears are a little bit messed up. Uh, the best way to do this is if you like increase the batch count and then you can find the one that you want, you can stick with that seed number. Well, that's what I would do, but it did follow my prompt. Now, if I wanted something of a different style, I would do depth of field. And now I could get like an even more extreme blurry background of a photo of a dog laying down. So let's give that a couple of seconds. And here we go. This is a really good picture. You see how after I added depth of field, it's got that full blurry milky background. It's got the close up shot. It's like a portrait of the dog. And this is all AI gener generated. If you like this picture, you could just hit save hit download and it'll actually download to your downloads directory so you can actually save all these photos that you want or generate it. Let's get to the fun parts. All right, so this is fun already because you could generate your own art, give it ideas, and you could use it for a base of an idea that you have in your head. So if you really want to design a flying cow through space and you want to see how that looks, you could actually put it into a prompt and get it generated that way. It's a good idea to project what you have in your mind into a screen so you can see what you're talking about. Now, as you can see, prompting is very, very important. It's the way you prompt or the way you tell the photo how it looks, it gets better and better. And as you can see, the first couple of dog images to this dog image, this looks so much better than what the first image would have looked like or the one actually before this with the laying dog. That's because of prompting. Now, if you head over to this website called Lexica, they have their own model that they generate, but we're not gonna be using that. What we're gonna be changing is head over to this settings icon Swap that over to Stable Diffusion 1.5, which is the same model we're using. And going down the list over here, you could see some of the pretty art that they have. Now, this is all AI generative using SD 1.5, which is, like I said, what we were using. So if I wanted to get some sort of idea on how to generate a certain prompt, say like this dragon photo or DND, this looks really good. But what's cool is it actually gives you the prompt that you need, it's the seed number and the guidance scale. So if I was to copy this, head over to Stable Diffusion, paste that in there, and use their seed number. I don't have to, but you could use their seed number, pop it in there, and generate. You will get something similar to the style that that prompt is giving you, which is a DND instead of now a dog, but we're gonna get a dragon. And there we have it. Uh, a very tiny dragon, because again, it's different on every time when you prompt something but it is similar style to what it wants. Now this is where batch comes in. I could do a batch of three, hit generate, and it's gonna generate three different photos from that same seed with that same prompt. And hopefully one of the three might be really good and then I could just use that instead. Now I'm gonna look, it is using about four gigs of RAM right now with that type of resolution. Good thing my fans are keeping it around like 65 degrees C, but yeah, basically all GPU processing. During the time that I was testing all this, uh, the GPU did not like me at all because I was pushing it almost to the limit every day. All right, so here we go. We have three images of that prompt. The first one we saw, we didn't really like. The second one looks pretty good, but I, li I really like the third one. And this is just tiled up, but if you want this close-up picture of that one, here we go. It's got maybe a little bit too much limbs, but still, it's right there. If I want to grab different prompts from here, say like, hmm, I don't know, a robot like this, Again, I could just copy this prompt, grab the seed, and this one's using a 12 scale. And then I can just paste this right into here, change the seed number. Again, you don't have to. Let's see what happens if I don't. Let's go to back to random, and it's using CGI scale of 12, right? Some of these prompts are really funny. Uh, product of a photo of a futuristic happy surprise robot pet. Asymmetrical, minimized, cute. Uh, and then they have all these names in there like Zahi Adid and all this other stuff. So I'm guessing it's a style of photo uh, that they're throwing in, but it seems to be able to generate what I'm, oh, you know what? I set up to three batch camps, so a little bit too much, but it is getting the eyes like that style. So let's see what happens after three batch counts. All right, here we go. We got three photos. I do really like the second one and that's how it generates. If you have the time, take a look into the prompting. You'll learn a lot of stuff on what they do to prompt. 
but let's get to the even more fun stuff where we could grab different types of models. So here we have another website called Civic AI, and this is where all the fun starts to happen. Now, if you've seen on the thumbnail, I'm actually using Cyber Realistic. This is the, uh, the model that I'm using. And if you go back out, it's gonna say Checkpoint, and there's different stuff here. There's LoRa, there's Checkpoint, there's um, text immersion. So there's different styles of different things you need to do. I actually use this as well, the uh, photo reel. So say if I want to generate a picture similar to something like this, I would grab this photo, um, click on the photo. It'll tell me what the model is based off of, which is again, SD 1.5. Everything's based off Fable Diffusion 1.5, which is the original model we're using. We usually just build on top of the model to generate this art, we train it so it looks better and better each time. So in here, we actually could download the file or the actual model. So if you hit this, it'll actually download the model called Cyber Realistic V3 Beta Safe Tensor. And say if I want to generate something similar to this, we just have to click on it and it'll actually give me exactly all the prompts that it needs. The positive prompts, the negative prompts, and also the sampler that it's using, the seed number, the steps and the CFG scale. So it basically has everything you need to generate a similar photo to this. So after we download this model, where do we transfer it to? I'm gonna show you that once, as soon as this is done. Okay, now that it's done, we'll just head over to our folders, head over to downloads. We're gonna grab the Cyber Realistic Cyber 3D. We're just gonna copy that, head over to our home folder, head over to stable diffusion web UI, models, and then we're gonna have stable diffusion right here. I do have a few models in here. I do have the Cyber Realistic version 2.1, so this is a little bit newer. So I'm just gonna copy it right over to this directory. And now it's Cyber Realistic version three beta. Head back over to stable diffusion, hit the little refresh icon right over here, and it's gonna pick up the new Cyber version three beta safe tension. Now, give it a few seconds after you click on it, it's gonna load the checkpoint. Now we are using Cyber Realistic V3. Heading back over to this, if I want to generate this similar picture, I'm just gonna grab all this, control C, head over to here, paste that in, make sure you have the negative prompts. And actually I've been looking through a lot of negative prompts and I save the ones I like um, because there's a lot that you could do like deform fingers, deform hands, all this other stuff you wanna like eliminate from your photo. Now next, Anything that has to deal with like really detailed stuff, I see that they're always using DPM++ 2M. So we're also gonna have to change that as well. It actually makes it look a little bit more realistic than cartoony. So we're gonna grab that here and let's see what else do they have. Uh, CGF scale of seven, steps 30, and this is a seed number. So I could use a seed number, I don't have to, but it's up to you if you wanna play around with it. And I'm not gonna do three batch counts, I'm just gonna do one. And let's see how that comes out. The only difference I have from this photo that I'm generating to the one that we just grabbed is that the sampling scale I have at 20 instead of 30. But you can see it's already generating the photo that we need. And there we have a very realistic photo of a girl. The hair is a little messed up over here, got kind of like twirled up, but, and the eyes are not perfect, perfect. I'm pretty sure if I was to change the scale probably to 30 steps, it would be a little bit better, but that's how you would get the models that you need. If you browse through this website, just going through some of the stuff that they have, it's, it's amazing. So one of the things that I like to play around with is the Loras. And again, there's so much you could do. I actually trained my face and I could use it. I still need more training because I need a better GPU, but uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a future video. But in here, if you got Laura, and say I do something called logo, I'll add that little prompt in here right? And if I hit generate, it's going to generate this, what I'm trying to do into a logo fashion that I could actually possibly use. I don't even know how it's going to come out yet, but yeah, something similar. Now this is definitely not a photo of a girl, but you get the idea. Adding Laura's will change the style of the particular photos you have. That's where you start looking into the Laura's into here where they have some of the checkpoints. Like this Laura is pretty good. I still haven't played around with it yet. But if you go in here, this is basically to turn uh, images into a dark mode. So it's something I wanna do, but you could hit download, grab that Laura, open up the folder again, 
All right, we're gonna grab Laura's copy, head over to our home folder, head over to Stable Diffusion, head over to Models, and then go over to Laura, paste that in here, go back to our own Stable Diffusion, hit this third icon, and then you could hit refresh. And now it's gonna have an extra Laura, which is L low raw. And I am gonna delete the logo part and generate the photo of the girl again. But this time I'm adding, what do you call this? Low resolution, low, uh, low key. So it says start at point weight of 0 0.6, which I should have just read the instructions on how to do this. And then you could keep, the best weight range is 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So Honestly, the model is not that bad. It says uh, to use 0 0.6 or 0 0.8, but I use one. It's, it actually came out pretty good. Anyway, that is it for this video. I know it's a little bit longer, but it's the, the basis of getting it started, downloading different checkpoints, downloading uh, different LoRa, so you could play around with different styles and learning about positive and negative prompts that you could use. Uh, there is a lot more you can do with Stable Diffusion, which, which I will be showing you in another video, which is converting your own images, uh, training your own face, extensions. There's a lot of things you could do with extensions. So uh, be sure to be subscribed to this channel, hit that little uh, bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as always, hack till it hurts.